Welcome back. Time to make these links working after all the route setup has been done. So in order to add links, I will go to my header.js and then here I will want to add my links. In my header, I will import the link component, if you want to call it like that, from the React router. And that allows me to create, well, links. And I will replace the anchor tag with link. And this will get rendered to an anchor tag in the background when, well, loading it in the browser then. But for me here, I will need to use link here and not a, not the anchor tag. But again, later on in the browser, this will be an anchor tag. So here I then need to add the to attribute to specify to which path to route here. And here I just want to go to slash home, let's say. And then I'm copying that, pasting it to my user. And here I wanna go to slash user for now. If I save this and go back to my application and click on user and then on home, you see that this navigation works fine. That's all. And if we inspect this, you can see it is an anchor tag indeed. Now, oftentimes you want to add conditional styles or classes to the active link to provide it some CSS styling, right? Well, that's actually pretty easy. You can add another attribute to your link here active style and here you could then say color or that we would need to pass a javascript object to it and then say color should equal red now if i save this now you see it's red when it's active sometimes you also want to pass a class name so you could then add active class name and then just specify let's say the class name you want to add let's say active so in this case this will get the active class, whatever it is active, as you can see here. If I navigate away, it doesn't have the active class anymore. But if I click on it again, we see the class is being added. So that allows you to apply conditional styling to your links here, depending on whether they are active or not, either through directly specifying the style, like so, or a class name which has then some underlying styles. In this case here though it simply doesn't so we don't see any change but it would be as you saw when I inspected it the case that this class gets attached to the link. Sometimes you also want to navigate from code and not through a link. So let's say in our user component here I'll add a button where I say go home. And on this button, I simply want to navigate home. Now, I could, I could make this a link styled as a button, that's clear. But I want to show how to navigate from code. So I'm just applying some styling to the button. And then I'll add a listener or, or an event handler, which I will call on navigate home. And I want to call this function whenever I click this button. So I will call this on navigate home. Don't add parentheses here, remember that. We're just providing a link to this method. Now, how do I navigate home here? I need to import something from the React router package. And this something is the browser history again. So browser history from React router. Oops. And then I can go to my on navigate home method here and simply call browser history, push, and then the path to which I want to navigate. So in this case, I want to navigate to slash home, right? If I save this, go back to the application, click on user, and then I go home. You see, we're taking home. That's all. That is how simple it is. And if you look at this command, you learn why it's called browser history. We push a new URL on the browser history and it gets pushed on the top, which is why we navigate there instantly. So the browser history now also includes the slash home route, which then is the active route. So we covered a lot. The missing thing for this basic router overview is how to pass parameters. 
let's say here on the user page, I want to display the ID of the user, right? Now, in order to display the ID, I need to first go to the index.js file and change my user path here because I'm expecting to get an ID as a get parameter with this URL. So the URL should then be localhost slash user slash the ID. To tell the React router that we are getting such an ID, so that we're getting a flexible a variable element in our URL, a parameter, I add the slash here and then colon and then whatever I wanna name this parameter internally. So that will be the name by which I can extract it later on. I'll choose ID for now. So this allows me to access the slash, well, ID route. Now, of course, if I save this, this will lead to an application which is broken because now this link isn't passing an ID even though we're expecting one. So just slash user doesn't exist anymore. You would need to enter something like slash user five and then you see it's working again. So in order to make it work again from, our, from within our application, I go to the header file and here I need to pass something, right? I need to pass more than just slash user. I need to pass slash user and then whatever ID you wanna pass. And of course, since we're in the template syntax here, you can also output some content dynamically here, right? So you could also add something like two plus two here, like so. And if I save this and go back, well, you see now it's navigating to slash user slash four, right? Because that's just the result. But I'll hard code it here for now. I'll go to the ID 10. And with that, well, it's working again. That's certainly nice, but um, we're not displaying the ID here, right? We are not extracting it. How can we extract our ID? Extracting parameters is fortunately really simple too. I'll go to the user component, which is where I wanna use the ID. And then here I'll use my single curly braces to output some dynamic content in my template here. And then here I can simply get my routing parameters by accessing this props and then params. So the route parameters, the get parameters will be passed by React Router to my props variable here or to my props property. So I can access any available parameters again, passed from my React router automatically without me doing anything on my props property and then on the parents object. And here I know I will get a parameter named ID because that ID here is the name I chose in my index.js file here, that thing after the colon. So this name here, ID, has to match the name by which I extracted here. With that, that's all if I save this. Now you see user ID 10. And if I enter something like 111, whoops, that was the wrong button, something like 111, well, now you see user ID 111. That is how you can extract the parameters. So I think you are seeing that passing parameters and extracting them is made really simple with the router. As the whole React Chess router is really simple to use, because I think it's very explicit about how to use it. Look at how you set up these routes. It's really simple. It's how you would mentally set them up because all the nesting and all the dependencies are clearly visible. And that is why the React.js router is really great and powerful. And I can only invite you to play around with it, create more complex routes and learn more about it. If you need some more help or want to dive into more advanced content concepts, then the place to go is the React.js router GitHub page. And there you will find some documentation. Click on tutorial here and then on lessons to see all kinds of different lessons where you can dive into the router much deeper than I did here. But you should have all the basics you need by now and with that, I think it's time to get started with the Redux series next. Hopefully see you there. Bye.